can you can you rephrase that? Um, so what are the different little metal parts and the buttons and how they all work together? Oh sure. Um, so you've got uh, a brass arm like this with a with a post that's hammered into that that board up to this point. So then when the button is on this end and it's got a hole going through it with a little felt bushing to um, minimize clacking. Uh, so when you push the button down it lifts the other end and on the other end this pad is, hang on, I have a visual for you. Um, the pad is a little sandwich. The bit that's against the the wood here is very very thin leather and this top surface is sort of a, a very stiff cardboard, cardstock, like museum board and in the middle is wool, uh, wool felt so it has just a, a little bit of compression but it's pretty firm and the leather makes a really good airtight seal against the wood and the bit that attaches these two, this is a little washer that we make out of leather which slides on the end of the arm and then is glued with this is a book binders PVA glue that has just a little bit of flexibility even when it's dried um, that holds the the washer and the pad together and then the springs are um, they're pre-coiled for us by a spring making factory in I think New Jersey and then we do the the last little bends to make them fit exactly where we need them to um, in-house. Most of the parts are as locally sourced as, as we can. Um, a lot of our um, woodworking uh, is done by a guy up in Colerain. Our buttons were for a long time made by a retired um, machinist and creator in Northampton who just passed away a few months ago. So we'll be finding someone else to do those soon, but he was a great uh, friend and supplier for a decade or more. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the, you know, the springs come from, they used to come from a place in Westfield, which went under, so now they come from New Jersey. These posts are stamped out for us by a place in Springfield. A lot of the leather comes from a, from a place in New Hampshire, um, so it's a lot of little operations that supply the parts and then a lot of the assembly all happening right in here. We've got a couple of different wood finishers that are local, one's in South Deerfield, um, the other is, um, I forget if he's in Greenfield or somewhere else slightly further off. But um, So this is all really locally made? A lot of it is very locally made, yeah. Oh. And the cardstock underneath what what gives the bellows its um, its form. You can look inside the there's a, there's a bellows on top of the cabinet there. Oh. Um, that cardboard is made pre-shaped for us by a uh, box making company in Greenfield. So so that's kind of a a, a neat thing that so much of the stuff's able to come from you know, within a hundred miles or a lot less in many cases. Wow. Can you tell me about the reeds? Yeah, the, the reeds, we don't make these. These, um, these are accordion reeds that come from a factory in Italy. Um, so the reed itself is this um, spring steel tongue which is affixed by a rivet to this is an aluminum um, block with a couple of, of these um, vents they call them or slots and the reed will vibrate like that through the through the vent um, so there are two reeds on each of these slots one on this side and one on that side and when the air is going through this way like you're closing the bellows, that's the reed that will sound, or sorry, 
that's the reed that will sound. And when you're opening the bellows like this, that's the reed that'll sound. And there's several different types of concertinas. So on, on the type that we're making right now, for any given button, which will have two reeds, they make different notes. Uh, for several other types of concertinas, they make the same note, whether the bellows are opening or closing. And the longer the reed, the lower the note. Um, so that's low, that's a much higher pitched note, for instance. <laughs> 